Kilmarnock and Ayr play in the homecoming Scottish Cup fourth round replay tonight. The first match was played in horrendous conditions, but both sides survived the storm. It's the Ayrshire Derby. We're at Rugby Park, the home of the oldest professional club in Scotland, Kilmarnock, for the homecoming Scottish Cup fourth round replay. Hi everyone, welcome along to Rugby Park, Kilmarnock. And it's a lot drier th than the last time these two sides met, I can assure you of that, we're pleased about that. It's Air United, second in Division 2 at Kilmarnock of the SPL. Let me tell you, league status counts for absolutely nothing tonight, and this derby is as fierce as they come. With me here in studio tonight, a man who represented both these sides and has played in this fixture. Nowadays, my Sky Sports colleague, and he is Alan McInally. I haven't changed, have I? You have not changed <laughs> one bit. It is so good to see you. What about the jam haircut? Do you I, like that? I think we should uh, <laughs> draw a veil over that one. <clears throat> Let me ask you this, Alan. Are both these clubs still very close to your heart? Yeah, naturally they are. I mean, it's where it all started for me, uh, United. And I had, you know, 16 years old, I was in that picture. Absolutely incredible. Uh, only 10 years ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and obviously finishing at Kilmarnock when uh, and Tommy, Tommy Bonds was here, which is, to be honest, the only reason I would have come back to, to Kilmarnock was with, with Tommy Bonds. I only played, you know, 10, 11 games, and I came back really to get myself fit in more of a coaching capacity and ended up playing some of the games and we, and we survived. So it was, it was I, I mean, it's great to be, I'm all over the place for Soccer Saturday. And to be back in Ayrshire, this derby is as big as any derby. Well, I was I just about you. to ask you that, Alan. What does this derby mean, especially to these people out there? Uh, it's, it's absolutely massive. I suppose there's more emphasis put on it, to, to be honest, because they don't get the opportunity to play in these anymore because they're miles apart in terms of, of divisions. You know, they're miles apart in terms of, uh, you know, crowd capacity they have. You know, United have an old ground. It's been the same since I was there, for goodness sake. Rugby Park of this fantastic place. Investment in, in Kilmarnock is so much more than it is in, in United. So the, so the difference between them is enormous and that makes the intenseness of this derby so, so big. It really We're is. Looking forward to it, Alan. We're looking forward to it. What about the first game, though? As I said at the top there, played in absolutely horrendous conditions, but we got a match out of it. Yeah, we did 2 2 in the end, and obviously, United got out of jail scoring in the last minute. But they had the wind machine and the rain machine working at full pelt. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. And, and, and to be absolutely honest with you, the fact that they gave us such an unbelievable cup tie and such an, an unbelievable result in this shocking weather was unbelievable. And that was Kamarnock's equaliser. In fact, Kamarnock missed a penalty as well and it shows you mm. just how well United done this is the one brings him down Alan Russell yeah and the unfortunate man who I'm, I'm going to say he misses the pen but it's a wonderful save from goalkeeper Stephen Grindley it really is wonderful save and that kept air in the game but the, the, the weather Jim was just absolutely it atrocious it was horrendous Alan as you say air kept at it but do you think they've blown their chance uh, well, I don't know. I mean, this is the one. I mean, he gets booked for this, incidentally. This is Alex Williams, who scores in the 90th minute. He doesn't get booked for this. Mwah. Thanks, referee. <laughs> and, and gives him a kiss. And, but and there he is. Got, yeah, and, and got booked for uh, for, for taking his, his uh, jersey off, which I don't, I don't, I, I can understand from tens of referee. But, but what it meant to Alex Williams and to Air United just to have another crack at the SPL team of Kilmarnock, their neighbours only eight miles up the road is so big. He's on the bench tonight. Does that surprise you? I think I think Brian's probably just keeping a cap on everything, you know, just trying to keep everybody's feet on the ground and not let it bubble over too much. You know, they're, st they're still absolutely buzzing from the first game, and they still have an opportunity to get into the next round of the of the Scottish Cup, which is a, which be a huge another huge carrot for them. Alan, here's Alan Russell, who we just saw there. He missed a penalty. I mean, you want to make an impact tonight. Well, if they get a penalty tonight, there's only one person going to be grabbing the ball, and that's going to be uh, Alan Russell. Don't worry about that. He's a good player, a very good player. Maybe a little. Uh, unfortunate the fact that the weather was so bad and it looked as if he never hit it particularly well and 
There was just, uh, there's so much in this tonight and there's, 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 there'll be battles in both sides of the pitch. Massive derby, thoroughly delighted I'm back in the Ayrshire and thoroughly looking forward to this. And we're thoroughly delighted you're here. Well, we're at Rugby Park in Kilmarnock. The home of the Killy Pie, voted the best pie in British football on more than one occasion. I'm off to get mine. Stay with us, we're with both tonight's managers after this. It's an important year in Ayrshire. It's the 250th anniversary of the birth of Robert Burns. And here in the little village of Alloway is where Scotland's bard was born. Lovers of Burns' poetry and music are flocking to Ayrshire to pay homage to the great man who died at just 37 years of age. But he left a legacy that will last as long as there are Scots to sing his songs. And if you didn't already know it, this Sunday is Burns' night. And in Scotland, in Ayrshire in particular, there will be some partying, I'm sure. I'm certainly looking forward to mine. And I mean that. Roll on the neeps and tatties, Alan McAnally. <laughs> well, exactly. I've already Mouth got watering. my... I've always got my haggis already. I'm quite sure. More from Alan in just a couple of minutes. Now, it's been over 40 years since Kilmarnock's finest hour when they lifted the Scottish League Championship. And a man who was pivotal to that side is someone Alan McAnally knows really well. It's his dad, Jackie. He's with David Tanner. Jackie, it's hard to imagine Kilmarnock repeating your... Championship success of 1965, but can Killy win the Scottish Cup this season? Um, everybody's got a chance of winning the, the Cup. Um, and obviously this game today um, with Air United, it's a tremendous thing for Ayrshire. This and uh, obviously I was an Air supporter when I was a boy. Uh, my father used to lift me over the turnstile at Somerset Park, but eventually I signed for Kilmarnock. And uh, so today, I think my heart goes out. I think as well, I see Kilmarnock go through the air. <laughs> I probably I shouldn't say that, but uh, that's uh, it. Uh, but I don't, I don't know. Um, they've got Ernie's got a chance to win the, the cup. What does this derby mean to Ayrshire? Oh, it's tremendous. Uh, the uh, the way the the, the the people come to the, the, to the game where they don't normally do it but when it's air and command up together it's blood and thunder <laughs> Jackie thanks very much okay that's it, that is it. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> that's my suit he's got on <laughs> <laughs> is that it that is it Jackie oh, brilliant. but I mean you must be so proud of him being here tonight uh, how yeah. special a night is this Alan for your dad well we arrived together and uh, I said, it's Alan Mike and I from Sky Television. And the guy said, all right, big Jackie, in you go. He wasn't bothered about me. It was my dad. He's, a, he's an absolute hero at command of my father. Obviously, we're winning the league here. And they've had some unbelievable European nights here as well. But uh, and when we're coming in and, you know, you're like, well, I'll give you my autograph. Forget it. They all wanted my father. Nothing to do with Alan Mike and Ali tonight. There was one boy who said to me, he said, you'll never be as good as your father, son. And I said, you're right. I'll never be as good as my father. Never. He has great memories oh, yeah. of this well, part of the world. Well, yeah, playing well, I, can, I was swell. My dad, 64, 65, I'd be two, three years old at the time. But I suppose I was brought here. But I can remember sort of coming <laughs> later on and, and coming even when they were all training around the side of the park. This is getting to you, oh, isn't it? Oh, terrible. No, there's, a, there's a tear in your eye, Alan no, McAnally. No. Well, I'm a tear in my eye because he looks better in that suit than I did. <laughs> <laughs> he looks terrific. We're delighted he's here. Well, of course, it's a very, very big night in air. It's the first Ayrshire derby to be played here at Rugby Park in nearly 13 years. Kilmarnock boss Jim Jeffries and air manager Brian Reid are speaking to David Tanner. Jim, Brian, thanks for joining us. Brian, considering the conditions and the fact you were at home in the last game, did you think your chance had gone 11 days ago? Obviously the conditions were, were atrocious, you know, it was, uh, tonight it's like a tropical heat wave, I think, in comparison, you know, but um, certainly it's, it makes for a, a good game tonight, good conditions, parts looking very well, firm soft surface, but I mean, we'll give it our best shot and see where we go. Jim, after losing six of your last seven games here, are you concerned about home form tonight? Well, we've said before, we look on the positive side, we've played well, there's games that we've we lost very narrowly and... Uh, you know, but that's going to change sometime, so this would be the perfect night to change that. Uh, it was a cracking cup tie the first time, I think it's only right the two clubs go in again. And, uh, you know, we were talking about the conditions there, I think it made for a, a very exciting affair. The fans were great, 
and uh, you know we had the chance when we could have went three one up, but fair credit to to here they they came uh, got a lift from that and probably at the end of the day deserved to to uh, get a, a second chance out of it. Brian, away to an SPL side tonight. What's your approach going to be this evening? I think obviously we're big underdogs. We need to keep it as tight and, and, and organised as long as we can. Obviously we don't want to go gung ho or anything like that and attack, attack all guns blaring, you know. But um, as I say, we've got to take confidence and as I say, we've got players that can that can create chances and hopefully we do, we, we can maybe put one of them away. Jim, did you learn enough about air in the first game? So this will be a tough one tonight. Oh, you know, we gave them every respect. I had watched them a couple of times, Brian knows that. And we watched them in away games a couple of times with Belay. Uh, so we know what they're all about. They've been going well in their league. and I know that's a priority for for Brian. And uh, I would like to see them get up and and even get even higher because uh, we miss these games. When you see what happened at the last game and the, the excitement that this has caused, it'd be great if we had more games against them. So we'll give them every respect. And we know because we're in a higher division, it means nothing in cup ties. So it'll be on the night who wants it most and who can take their chances. And hopefully, as I say, Brian will be hopefully that's here and I'm hoping it's come on up. <laughs> Jim, Brian, good luck to you both. Yeah, yeah shake hands, why not? <laughs> Who's going to be happier tonight? <sighs> well, my heart would obviously say Air United, but I think seriously, Jim, that I think, I think Jim Jeffrey speaks really well there. He's given Air United every respect. You know, there's a couple of divisions between them, but he knows this is a cup tie. He's been in enough cup ties to know it'll be a problem. But Kilmarnock at home, the weather is fine. It's a cool evening here at Rugby Park, but Kilmarnock probably should have enough to deal with Air United tonight. The only one good thing, of course, is there'll be an Ayrshire team travelling to Inverness for the next round. But I've got to say, the, because the game is here, and it's a little bit easier the weather, then you've got to say that Kilmarnock should be one to three favourites. But if Air are to stand a chance, and you hope they do, yeah. what should their early approach be? Well, I, I think what, what Brian Reid said, it's not a gung-ho attitude. I think you've got to get the ball and start passing it between you. Get comfortable on the ball, because you've got a big crowd behind you, and they're going to want you to come forward and come into the game quickly. And I think that's what, what Kilmarnock would want Air to do, and leave spaces at the back. They don't have to do that. You're not going to win the game in five minutes. This game could go 90 minutes, it could go even further. Air have to you have to remember that so just easy easy into the game get a feel of the ball if you get an opportunity make sure you hit that onion bag but I'm hoping that Air United just squeak it it's Air United for Alan Air United have never won the Scottish Cup Kilmarnock tasted success as recently as 12 years ago Paul Wright scoring the only goal against Falkirk what a day it was for him and the rest of the Killy players and these same players became local heroes after that cup win. Can they repeat it this season? Well, they've got a real job to do tonight. First and foremost, the Ayrshire Derby is up next. Against Air United. We're at Rugby Park for this replay in the commentary box alongside Bill Leslie, a man known for his dazzling displays for Kilmarnock. And that wasn't all that was dazzling. That's him. It's dazzling Davy Proven. That's uncalled for. That's uncalled for, John White. Whose idea was that? Well, it was back in the days when this fixture used to be the Hersher Derby. In all seriousness, Davy, in your time in Kilmarnock, you played in a few of these games. Always a special match because of the fact that it didn't come around too regularly, and that's just the case these days. That is the case, Bill. You know, we were, were swapping divisions in those days, and that's why it was something of a rarity. That's why it was savoured so much. And that certainly is the case at the moment. But uh, I had four and a half years at this club. It was a great grounding for me, and I enjoyed every single Ayrshire derby I took part in. When we saw 12 days ago at Somerset Park, but although they don't come round very often, they can be well worth the wait. Seven years without this fixture prior to the first meeting. Well, here we go again after that two-all draw, just under two weeks later. Eagerly anticipated, highly attended, and a really good cup atmosphere building here at Rugby Park. SPL against Scottish League Division 2, of course, 16 places and two leagues apart, but as we all know, it's much more than that, it's the tie that had Ayrshire buzzing first time round, and this time, no different. Almost poetic, perhaps, that in the home county of the Bard of Ayrshire for this derby, 
just three days short of Ravi Burns' birthday. And this, of course, the year that the Scottish Cup is sponsored by Homecoming Scotland in order to uh, commemorate the 250th anniversary of the birth of the national poet. Both managers hoping that their sides don't fluff their lines here. Kilmarnock, of course, come into this as the overwhelming favourites. The conditions are good, the stage is set perfectly. But they have derived great belief from the way that they came back from the dead to force the replay. And having been able to book their trip 12 miles down the road, now they fully intend to make the most of it. So Kilmarnock, the ones with everything to lose here, they're the SPL side, they're the home side, and they're expected to win. Jim Jeffries makes one change from the weekend defeat here to Hearts. Willie Gibson preferred to joint top scorer Danny Invincible. Both top scorers, in fact, midfielders for Kilmarnock this season. Craig Bryson as well, he scored in the first match. Watch out for Spaniard David Fernandez. not prolific, but certainly a match winner when he's in the mood. The part-timers of Air stick with the side that started the tie back at Somerset Park. A classic part-time cocktail of professions, from bank workers to shipyard workers, from architects to students. It's a blend, though, that's been working on the field. Fired by the goals of Brian Prutney, the top scorer in the Scottish League Division 2. Alongside him, 20-year-old David Gormley, signed from the Western Region Junior Leagues last summer. Just signed a new contract this very evening, Danny Invincible, but only on the Kilmarnock bench. Air United, of course, have Alex Williams, the player who came off the bench to force the replay in the initial tie. Only 13 or so miles away, but it's the first time Air have been here to Rugby Park in 13 years. They won on their last visit, that was in the League Cup second round, August 1996. And they've got this terrific record over their local neighbours as well. Unbeaten in the last five meetings and they've won the previous four prior to that draw at Somerset Park just under a fortnight ago. They've also brought with them a fine band of travelling fans. Around 3,000, which is about 1,000 more than they get as their regular home gate at Somerset Park. Skied in the air by Scott Walker. They're united in white, as they were in the home tie. Kilmarnock, of course, in their recognisable home strip. It's all about Kilmarnock's attitude tonight, Bill. If they're a yard off the pace at all, they could be in bother here tonight. This will be a very tricky game for them. If they're up to speed, and Jim Jeffries will have been working on that, making sure that mentally they know what the job's about tonight, they should get the job done, but only if... Well, it's often said, isn't it, that form goes out of the window in the cup. Kilmarnock will certainly hope that that is the case. Six defeats in their last seven home games here. Take it a bit further and include the League Cup defeat here against Celting, and that's seven in their last eight. They're in the middle of a really bad run here at Rugby Park, something, of course, that our United won't give two hoots about. I think Kilmarnock's confidence must be a little bit fragile playing here at Rugby Park, given the, the recent record. And Brian Reid was trying to crank up that pressure on him, saying that he doesn't feel that there's, there's too much between the clubs, although they're separated by two divisions. And Brian Reid will certainly be hoping his lads can ask a few early questions of, of Jim Jeffries' voice here. And there'll also be the feeling in the Kilmarnock ranks as well that they should have put this tie to bed in the initial meeting, had that opportunity from the penalty spot, didn't they, to... Uh, make the scoreline 3-1, surely there would have been no way back for Brian Reid's air. Pascali, back in the midfield for Kilmarnock, played uh, in defence in that initial match. And Fernandez the Spaniard. Kilmarnock looking to get their passing game going. Here's James Fowler. Ahead of him, Mehdi Tao, the Moroccan. And he's one who can make things happen. Not this time, though. A spin through without too much worry to Stephen Gridley. Well, he couldn't keep it in 
play in fact so the corner kick has been given first opportunity first examination of this air defense Fernandez to deliver near post put it away far enough air Fernandez will get another bite and list the help of Mehdi Taul carries it out of play in front of the air fans for behind the air goal I think, I think Fernandez is going to be a big problem for Air United tonight, but you know, we've talked a lot about players who play just off the front. Fernandez will play between middle and front for Kilmarnock tonight, and it gives the two centre backs a problem. They don't know whether to go all the way with them or leave it a holding midfield player to look after them. Well, let's say a fixture which has made everyone take notice. The national manager is here, former manager of Air United, of course. Started off his managerial career at Somerset Park. Here's Powell. He's another one who wasn't involved in that first meeting. Injured Pascali, who scored the opening goal, of course. And Alan Cohn. Back in goal. Over his neck problems, which ruled him out. So Kamala could feel that they've got a more first strength lineup out there. Fernandez on, here's Russell. Great darting run by Bryson into the middle. If he can be picked out, he might just be, you know. And that is some sensational defending by Neil McGowan to prevent a Kilmarnock opener. Absolutely brilliant. Well, it's a fabulous clearance because the cross in here takes Grindley right out of the game. Took a little nick there off the, the centre back had gone out wide. Terrific clearance. Fernandez, Kilmarnock look to make their early mark. Bryson. Now we've stolen it. And sliced rather wildly by James Fowler. The forward momentum can continue. This is David Gormley, the 20-year-old, former junior league player. Used to play at Glen Afton. Teed up towards the far post. Couldn't pick out his uh, teammate there, Brian Prunty. Well, he did the difficult bit. He made the space. He made the half yard to get the cross in. He's not the quickest, but a nice little change of pace here to, to buy him a little bit of room to get his left foot around the ball. Doesn't quite get it the way he wanted. Worth pointing out that many of these air players have been at work today, not the overnight stays at hotels that full-time professionals get. David Gormley, block paver. Alongside him, the warehouse loader, Brian Prunty. Only a couple of full-time professionals on the books are there. It's the way of life in the lower leagues in Scotland. Uh, though making a good fist of uh, getting promoted from Scottish Division 2, they're a little bit off the pace of Wraith Rovers, but due to their cup commitments and postponements, they've got a couple of games in hand against the leaders. That'll get them right up neck and neck with them. That's all for the future. Now they have in their sights a tie against Inverness if they can get past this of course a big if positive signs as Ryan Stevenson comes forward McGowan's throw this is Chris Aitken Dean Keenan was the intention of the pass from the air captain as it is it's Alan Russell for Kilmarnock and Willie Gibson Toll. Fowler on the move outside him. and taken down with something of a striker's challenge by Pranti well, I should have played a little bit earlier to, to James Fowler who's in an advanced position here made a nice angle and wanted a little bit earlier Still tempting here for Kilmarnock though to, to knock it into the back post. Centre backs have gone up. A sly one down the side, in for Fernandez. And they get the uh, advantage there. A little bit of discussion afterwards as uh, the difference of opinion prevails. I think it's given against Fernandez here. A little tug of the jersey here in the corner. But he's the one who's got a little bit extra, a little bit more craft and class than the rest here tonight. David Fernandez. Scully thought about coming. 
didn't need to in the end. Bustling figure of Bryson in that Kilmarnock midfield. Gibson looking for Fernandez. Yeah, defence stick tight. You saw footage of their last win, that was back in 1997. That was the final of their three wins in the Scottish Cup, runners-up five times. Also proud of the fact they were the first club to ever be involved in a Scottish Cup tie played. October 1873, they lost to Renton. Not too many around who remember that. Jim Jeffries, of course, with a little bit of cup pedigree himself. The year after Kilmarnock won. He was Hearts manager when they lifted the cup. Walker. On by Alan Dempsey. Far from a warm night, but you compare the conditions to that which uh, the clubs had to put up with in the first yeah. meeting, it's positively tropical. I think the assumption here tonight, Bill, is that Kilmarnock on their own pitch, you know, in better conditions uh, are odds on favourites, but I think this pitch and it's in terrific condition will suit Air United every bit as much. Yeah, they were distracted out, they did play away from home at the weekend and uh, lost two goals to nil. That's Sterling just one win in their last four away, so they don't exactly uh, bring a glowing away form here to their near rivals. They look to hit the front here, that's not a bad ball at all, it's not bad at all, it's absolutely fantastic for Air United. Brian Prunty claims the goal, and that is exactly what the doctor ordered for the cut minnows. Well, he's brave enough to put his head in, it all comes from this slack pass here from Simon Ford. Gives it away and then can't get back goal side either. Alan Combe desperately trying to come, but never getting there. And Prunty brave enough to put his head in. Was it his head? Upward ball for Ford. Well, I'll tell you what, is a handball. Watch his left arm. Well, it certainly comes off his left hand. I don't think the goal that the referee can see that. He's blindsided at the referee. And Prunty has somehow got off with it. What a break for air. Well, he's pulled it off, hasn't he, Brian Prunty? The goal will stand. Air United lead for the first time in this cup tie. Steve Conroy, the referee. to be the decisive blow how controversial that will be what a chapter it would be in the history of these Ayrshire derbies strong challenge in Willie Easton Easton again Gormley just slipped as he went to keep it in play or foul, it'll certainly have given Air a massive shot in the arm, the use of the arm, which led to the goal. Oh, 
Tao. A swing of the boot which carries little danger as far as air are concerned. Just the start that Jim Jeffries didn't want. If the confidence is fragile here at Rugby Park, it's taking another knock here. Pascali. Italian from Milan, talking in the build-up to these matches, Pascali about how he was weaned on the uh, Inter-AC Milan derbies, he used to stand on the uh, terraces at the San Siro, cheering on his boyhood heroes at Inter. Different blend of derby here, but it's certainly come to life with that early controversy. McGowan sweeping it in, bounces off Pronti again. Well, misjudged by Fraser Wright, very unconvincing commandment so far at the back. Both the centre-backs. Certainly Simon Ford has to hold his hands up for his part in the goal. First of all, for giving the ball away, and secondly, not getting goal side when it really mattered. saying to the referee they're going to have to settle for the free kick well we've gone 14 minutes Bill and the first 20 minutes of this game is going to be frantic we're going to see a lot of that possibly the most difficult spell in the match for the referee until the game settles Willie Gibson stands over this one maybe taking a sighter at Grindley's goal Defended it well enough. Well, that's good defending because Grinley decided he was coming for that and then changed his mind. Came a few yards and then just checked out of it. Another Achille corner. And swept behind. Just wonder about the referee's positioning at the goal. You know, when the ball is knocked long, Simon Ford gives it away here. Now, as it's not long, Steve Conroy, I don't think, can possibly get near enough to call that. He's wrong side anyway, he's blind side. I don't think the referee can call that. He's relying on his fast side assistant, who's right up with play, looking across. And he has to see that. I think it's a pretty unobstructed view of Trunty's left arm. Tough call, I know, but it's one that he really should get right. Tom Murphy is the referee's assistant on that dugout side of the field. He will certainly be involved in the post-match debate. As far as Jim Jeffries and Kilmarnock are concerned, knowing the point that you just made, David, I feel that it shouldn't have got to the point where the arm could have been used. But Simon thought that as soon as he gives the ball away, he must check his positioning. Have a look at Prunty and make sure his goal side for anything that's, that's not forward. Russell's quite happy running the channels, he's the more mobile of Kermanek's front two. Fernandez happier dropping off. We'll try and get Russell trying to get up the, the outside of the two air centre-backs. Kermanek having a lion's share of the ball, but that'll be no consolation to, to Jim Jeffries right now. Fernandez. Mr Henty might have got him behind. Beaten from the defender, takes the sting out of the cross. Now Ford. 
And this time the referee's assistant makes the decision for the man in the middle. And Kilmarnock can pull forward through Fowler. Unconvincing. Crowded out by white shirts. Gormley looks for Franti. However he scores his goals, Brian Pranti can't say he's not prolific, that's his 15th of the season in all the Scottish leagues, only Chris Boyd of Rangers, former Kilmarnock player of course, has scored more than him. Gibson, given no time on the ball. Gormley. It's help, did well to take it in. He's up against Fraser Wright who did come across from centre-half to cover the danger. since Kilmarnock broke the hoodoo and got the better of air it was in this competition uh, then in the first division Kilmarnock in the SPL they won 2-1 uh, here in the third round that was back in 1994 since then joyless in the five meetings for Kilmarnock and with just under 20 minutes play so the pattern continues for Killy they haven't played so far haven't turned up so far Kilmarnock obviously stunned by that that first goal, but Ayr have really settled into the game now. Kilmonic look to do the same. It's a good, busy run by Gibson. And side netting. Good moment though, good moment for Willie Gibson. Well, he didn't even lift his head. Once he gets onto his right foot, he's not interested in anybody else inside the box. And he's every right, once it opens up for him, to put his foot through. Sat up nicely for him, and he's not far out. Far better. Moments like that that he's preferred in the starting lineup to the Australian Danny Invincible. Just going to have a, a break and play here for a bit of treatment for Brian Prunty. One of the strange moments about the goal, Davy, is that there was no complaint from the goalkeeper or from the other players who must have seen it. The assistant, I think, is the only one. I mean, I don't think Steve Conroy, and I've said already, can see this, but the assistant is looking right across. Is he obscured by four? I don't think so. And the assistant, to be fair, did well to make up the ground to be in line with the last defender. Certainly a tough call, but one that Jim Jeffries, I'm sure, will have plenty to say about if that turns out to be a central part of this result. serious though for the man who got the goal the top scorer in Scottish Division 2 she's pretty upset about it as well and little wonder a little reorganising for, for Brian Reid to do it just go with two banks of four at the moment leave one up and it was all going so well too well for Ayr and now they're a man down and a key man down as well Alex Williams, the player who scored the equalising goal in such spectacular style, particularly the celebrations, comes on with three quarters of the match remaining. Good ball floated into the box, Walker's got forward. Terrific cross. Scott Walker had taken up a good angle at the back post. Usually favourite there when coming in on the, on the run on the angle. Dropped into the perfect area. They do well here. Scott Walker knows that's a chance. All he's looking for here is something dropped in that he can go and attack, and he wouldn't ask for a better cross than this. Ford backtracking. 
different sort of a threat with Williams keen to prove a point and continue his uh, good run in the cup and it was a real team effort for Air to uh, come from 2-1 down in the closing stages of the match to get the replay of course and it was Williams who stole the headlines here he is now beaten in the air by Ford this time but doesn't look too serious towel and let's get in each other's way on by Russell here's Fernandez Spaniard from Deportivo La Coruña towel that's a really good spun ball into Pascali now Gibson And goes to ground, free kick given. Keenan, the man to offend. That's well, a good run by Gary Hay, who, who gets up the outside here, draws the right back out of position. Billy Gibson, after it, his last run into the, the channel, same thing in his mind, get it onto his right foot, and clearly blocked off. He was not going to pass there, was he, Willie Gibson? No nonsense stuff from Dean Keenan. Scored in that first meeting with a rare headed goal. Well, they'll be looking to get something like that on this Kilmarnock against Air as they look to come from behind in the tie. Whipped in by Gibson! And it was a save. There's a Fraser Wright. There's Fraser Wright who almost gets on the end of it. So much pace in the ball, it's hard for Wright to make up the ground there. Fernandez delivers low near post, disappointing from a Kilmarnock point of view. A big cheer from the air supporters. Yeah. 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 Also, throw another factor into the mix about. Uh, with the Kilmarnock come out second best here again they've lost their last four games here they've never in their long history lost five in a row at home many many reasons that they'll desperately want to turn this round but plenty of time to go Williams neat layoff to Gormley Willie Easton forward. Fraser Wright on his way back. Just stabbed it away from immediate danger. Now Towell getting a little frantic down there. Towell stumbles. A touch of composure from Russell. Fernandez now. Bryson on the run. Fernandez seeks Russell. Closed out well. Solid enough defended by Dempsey and trying to turn that into attack. Pascali's challenge just gone up a notch, hasn't it? The tempo of the match. Willie Gibson now for Kilmarnock. Russell and Fernandez in the middle. Gibson gets it middle cider again, and that was a real chance for Kilmarnock. Fernandez couldn't finish. It was a horrible ball for Walker to try and defend at the back post. He's between the posts, he's running towards his own goal, and he's terrified that he might knock it past Grinley himself. Terrific ball in again from Billy Gibson, who's getting a lot of joy down that left-hand side. Well, the home supporters can sense that something might be on the way. The corner certainly is from Fernandez. Keeper comes and Brindley didn't get the touch he was looking for, and that's turned out nicely for him. I think it's blocked off there. Might have been Fraser White, who's, who's just trying to make sure he's not getting a free run at it. Well, let's get some news from the dugouts with David Tanner. Bill, I've just come out of the United dressing room where Brian Prunty has a large ice pack on his injured hamstring. I asked him, did you handle the ball when you scored? And he said, I think I scored it with my shoulder. Now that replay clearly shows he didn't. I said, are you sure it wasn't your hand? He just smiled and winked and said, I'm claiming it though. Davey Proven can perhaps translate that one for us, Bill. 
uh, Scottish for the hand of God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they all count, Bill, don't worry about that. Can they certainly do. Well, a second would uh, make it less controversial, that's for sure. Ford denies air on this occasion. does prove decisive makes the victory all the sweeter for air all the more painful for Kilmarnock oh, I can see why he's getting animated Jim Jeffries there's nobody in that Kilmarnock side at the moment demanding the ball and particularly in midfield the likes of Bryson and Pascali they really have to, to be big characters right now show for the ball and try and dictate the play and the criticism of Kilmarnock in recent weeks, particularly their most recent two home defeats against Hearts, was that when they were on top, and they were on top for long periods of the match, they couldn't score, couldn't take the chances they were making. Same story here against Aberdeen when they lost. Today, though, it's hard to say that they have been on top and been able to establish themselves as you would have expected the side from the loftier leagues to do. too quick for Walker down the outside in the corner there. It's one thing you can't fault about Kilmarnock so far this evening is their delivery from wide areas. Gibson yeah. one sign and Fernandez. Just surprised they haven't off. tried to get Gibson on the ball a little bit more often. Try and get him isolated. Fernandez who looks to do just what you were talking about, Davy. Give Gibson something to chase. Walker though. He's a no-nonsense defender, and Gibson finds that out the hard way. Well, centre-back was always a favourite, wasn't he? Gibson, I think, wanted end to feet, didn't want to end behind. But he does deliver well for, from this type of situation. And that comes Fraser right forward as well. And uh, of all the deliveries put in, both from <laughs> set pieces and from open play, that's the poorest we've seen. Well, Kilmarnock supporters, understandably, try, starting to get on the, the team's case here. And that's not going to help. The goal would. Fernandez's touch, it's loose in the box. Walker can carry it away. Seem to be caught in two minds there, Kilmarnock over what to do with it. I just fell to, to the wrong player. Fraser Wright really struggling to get on the turn there. Dempsey, four down for Kilmarnock. Now Tau. Is Russell wide. to uh, the opening minutes when McGowan made that excellent clearance off his own goal line, header away. And the scoreline was still nil-nil. Towel. Keenan glances it only as far as Gibson. Hay on the overlap here for Kilmarnock. Fernandez, Hay. Comparatively easily dealt with by Campbell. Kilmarnock collect, Taul. Bryson for Pascali. 
And more Pascali, a little bit of a hit and hope effort, you feel that one. Pascali again, that's better. Towel. Russell in the middle, so too Fernandez. Here's Pascali. More good stuff from Martin Campbell. Did really well the centre back there. If he mistimes that challenge, he's given away a penalty. Had to be spot on when it was. Better spell for Commander though. Can't get out of their own half at the moment. They should have done that though. Ford goes for one from a long, long way out. And the momentum goes. Well, he's got to try and find one of his strikers here. He's going to do very well to score from this range. He's got Russell showing inside left channel. He's got Fernandez right. Wrong choice for me. Not the sort of passage of play that will particularly please the manager when they are starting to build as good a pressure as they've had on the air goal in the match so far. Stephen Grinley who fired that up, part of the Queen of the South side, beaten by Rangers in the final last year. The holders in action, live on Sky Sports in round five of the homecoming Scottish Cup. They're at Forfa, see it live Sunday, February the 8th, Sky Sports 2 and HD2. Towel. Two for company. Campbell away, Stevenson helps it. Razor right for Kilmarnock, Pascali underneath it, so too Stevenson. Rice and lightweight under the challenge of the air captain Aitken. Just over ten minutes left on the half with Kilmarnock starting to find a little bit of their rhythm. Their priority might be just now to see this lead through till half-time. Maybe they'll think a little more positively with Williams set away. Better defending that time from Ford and that's exactly where he should have been at the goal. Goal side. Gibson who's come in field. And a good run by Gibson. Stevenson stops him in his stride. Cross much stronger on his right side, Gibson. And they are squandering opportunities, they're making decent angles down either side, come on. Final ball at the moment is letting them down. Gibson, little back heel into the path of Hay. This is better from Kilmarnock. Just couldn't get it away from the near post. He rolls away just for goal kick. They survive there. I think Gary, Gary Hayes looking for a penalty here. I think he feels he's tripped here just as he tries to put this across the six yard box, and he might have had a case. Better look at it here, he gets across the front. Well, it would have been of the soft variety. The Kilmarnock at last making a little bit of headway here. again and this is the route most likely to be productive for Kilmarnock no doubt about that floated in by Gibson and Pascali's head up possible well, catch good early ball and they have to try and get the ball in early he's just on the stretch there can't really find the, the power Pascali Kilmarnock just starting to boss the game now trying to, to back Air United up reminding you that if Kilmarnock can get an equaliser of scores a level whatever after 90 minutes extra time and then penalty kicks this matter is decided once and for all tonight it's 11th Scottish Cup meeting between these two close neighbours and big big rivals I had a chance to put it in Gary here that, that for me has just happened a little bit too often strikers are making runs they want it played in early Gary he just switched the, the ball onto the other foot there. The team, team talk coming up with Jim Jeffries. Oh, 
Walker. It's been pretty commanding in the air so far in this first half. Towel has come on and make progress along the ground. He thinks he's got the space here that he can put the inside of his right foot around this James Fowler and knock something in his coming away from the keeper. Doesn't get the inside of his boot around it. He's trying to put it in early. There's no harm in that. And look at Kilmarnock's goal scoring record in the SPL this season. Hardly impressive. Only he scored nine in 11 league matches here. Average a goal again overall, 22 in there, 22 so far. This is Towell right through the middle, real opportunity, out comes Grindley, Russell off the line again. Kilmarnock can't believe it, they're denied by Ayat. Well, look down at the, the near side assistant, Bill, he's right in the corner, he's well placed to see this. If he has an unobstructed view, lovely little layoff from Fernandez. goalkeeper did really well. Oh, very tight. But there's nobody between the near side assistant who's right down in the corner and I think he's made a great call. I don't think that's over the line. Certainly not all of the ball. Great decision by the linesman on the near side here. And he was perfectly placed to call it. Well, they're certainly being tested here tonight, aren't they, the officials? The goal that uh, certainly had a touch of handball about it from the now departed Prunty. And then of course a big call to make on the line, correctly made as uh, Davey was saying. Taul. He was at the heart of that uh, build-up. Now Pascali. Well, it took Bryson a long time to get out of the way there for Pascali to get the shot away. Taul again could have put the ball in the box, hesitating. And Bryson desperately trying to make way for Pascali to, to get the shot in. down as well referee's assistant on this side saw no case to answer Pascali no doubt about it Kilmarnock having their best spell of the match here and right on cue they give it away I think the two air centre backs would struggle in a, a race against Russell the Kilmarnock have really got to try and get the, the striker up the outside of either of them they don't have a great deal of pace at the back but they try and slide this man into the channels Easton. Ian Keenan tussle. Campbell's touch out of play. Gibson. Got it away before the charge arrived, but nonetheless, the decision will go against air. Looks like we're going to see a yellow card as well. I think for the moment Billy Gibson thought about taking his own retribution. Wisely got himself out of the way, left it to Steve Conroy. And Keenan will go into the book, he's done a robust challenge already on Gibson. It's a defensive shift that Keenan's going to have to do because he doesn't want to leave Gibson one-on-one. -on -one. We saw early in the match that Gibson can come onto his right side, he'll give United problems. Keenan's done well to, to protect the fullback. And in pure duelling terms, it does give Gibson a slight upper hand in that he can now really afford to run at Keenan. that they were looking for and uh, there was the one up front to Gormley very much isolated on his own as 
uh, used all their numbers to soak up the Kilmarnock pressure. Pascali. Russell. Towel holding a wide position on this right. Here he is. Fowler. And again, good position and a delivery that will disappoint the Kilmarnock supporters. As as well, Ford certainly had a hold of Gormley. And that'll be a free kick well won, uh, Wilfield. Does well the striker, takes all the pressure off here. here. Sticks to him with the first touch. And the free kick allows here to get right up the pitch here. Walken and Campbell just starting to camp on their 18 yard box a little bit. I'm sure Brian Reid would not see them further up the pitch. Helped on by Gormley. Here's Williams. This puts it in an area for Gormley to attack, back comes Bryson, away by Hay. Hay's header, that's the flick from Pascali, Campbell. Hay. Russell gives him on the overlap. Gonna have one minute of added time. Pascali, Gibson, Russell and Fernandez in the middle. Pascali as well. Towel, clever flick, Gibson. Russell! Just had a knack for having men in the right place at the right time defensively, Aaron, this first half. And Martin Campbell did really well to squeeze there, but nice build up there. Tao involved, coming in off the right hand side to get involved in the, on the far side of the pitch. And what a good time it would be for Killer to get back into this. Fowler, Tao. And three air players now or thereabouts. And Tao on the ground is penalised. It's the assistant that gave the decision here. Just preventing their players playing the ball there. And it looks as if they are going to get in one up at half time. And Brian Reid couldn't have asked for much more from this first half. Well, his nickname is the Honest Men. Did they have an honest goal? Well, it's certainly been given. Steve Conroy and his assistants couldn't spot the hint of handball, to say the least. That at the moment is the goal scored by Prunty, who's gone off injured, that separates the sides. As it stands, it's air going through. They lead at half-time at Kilmarnock by a goal to nil. And it's Kilmarnock in the cup up against their great local rivals, Air United. And it's Air United of Division 2, remember, one up on SPL Kilmarnock at half time. We'll talk about the goal in a moment, should it have stood, but Alan McAnally's with me. What did you make of that first half? We knew it'd be feisty, it's just that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's exactly that. It's a, a real typical Ayrshire derby, and added the spice of being the Scottish Cup, and they have somehow managed to get their noses in front using the the book of Robbie Burns's <laughs> poems, I suppose, to put it in. But it is, it's been a fantastic... They've given everything that they can possibly do. Kelly haven't quite got in th you know, through the gears. They've had lots of opportunities, but as of yet, haven't scored. Brian Prunty scored the goal. Yeah. Was it a goal? Should it have stood? Uh, probably not. If the linesman had seen it completely, I think he would have seen that Prunty's definitely used his arm. There's, a, there's, there's one thing I was thinking as well, when you're running through as a striker, Jim, when his hand goes up, he's probably thinking, I can see the goalkeeper out the side of my, my eye here, and I don't want to take a, a beating from the goalie, but I think it's exaggerated because he definitely pushes his arm to the ball. The ball comes off of Ford's head, 
slightly. At the same time, Prunty's arm pushes the ball into the net. Yeah. And the linesman been, had seen it absolutely clearly. He surely would have given a handball. David Proven called it right. The referee, impossible for him to see. The only man that could have seen it was the linesman, and he didn't see it completely. Well, the linesman's up with players you can see in the far side, but his view is obstructed, isn't it? He, he can't see. He can't see for Ford's head. But, but he's, he, there's no question... For me, that Prunty used his hand, he knows he's used his hand, but Era 1 0 up. Does he know he used his hand? Will he admit it? Let's find out. He went off injured, he's now with David Tanner. Brian settled the argument. Was it a handball? Well, after just seeing the replay there, it's, it's a stonewall handball, you know, but uh, sometimes they go for you and sometimes against you, and thankfully the, the linesman, the referee, is on the wrong side. Did you mean to handle the ball? Absolutely not. Um, I tried to put my head on it, but as I say, um, I wasn't quite brave enough and uh, the defender tried to get back as well, but um, I'll take that anyway. If you get the 1-0 win, would you accept it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. No doubt about it. Brian, thanks for your honesty. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Brian Prunty talking to David Tanner. There he is. And uh, of course, as I said, he's gone off injured. He's having another look at it. He says it was a stonewall handball, yeah, although he didn't mean it yet, yet, yet. There he is, still yeah, talking to David Tanner. Uh, but he was honest there, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean, good for him. He knows. I, I do believe that as a striker, when you're going through, there is something with to, to, to protect yourself, Jim. You know, there's a lot of times where your hand will come up, but he certainly knows he can just add a little momentum to the ball heading towards the goal. Hey, listen, this is a Scottish Cup tie. If A United can get to the next round by hook or by crook, they're there. Let's get to the second half now and rejoin David Proven and Bill Leslie. Well, it's not just two months since they last won here, Kilmarnock. It's two months since they've done anything other than lose here. Steve Conroy, the referee, and important to say that, as it has been said before, he was unsighted. No way he could have spotted the handball involved in the goal. And he was given a uh, hug and a kiss, wasn't he, by Alex Williams after he scored the equalising goal in the first meeting. Might just get a few more of those from some air players if that goal that they scored in the first half through Pumpney turns out to be the decisive one. Hamstring injury, by the way, that forced the departure of Grant Prandy, the goal scorer. I don't think he'll give it too long before he, he thinks about a change, Jim Jeffries. Danny Invincible, the obvious one who would come on and inject a bit of energy. No further changes at half time. And Kilmarnock immediately go on the attack, looking to wipe out this deficit as quickly as possible. No doubt there is a little bit of paint peeling off the walls of the home dressing room after Jim Jeffries' team talk. Fernandez, the Spaniard, to deliver. Good corner as well. Gibson takes the touch. Blocked away by Scott Walker. Had a very strong first half. The two centre halves are there. You just sense they're going to need to have a very good second as well because they will be asked questions, many of them. into Gibson at a pace that he couldn't control. This guy was on the back of Ryan Stevenson. That's okay for Air United, you know, edging up the pitch. Eventually we'll be able to put the ball in the box. Ford, unconvincing. Gormley. Dempsey. Pascal, who comes across, appeals for handball rather optimistically as the Italian clears away. Tell what, he leaned into it, Bill. The assistant looking to, to be fair to the assistant on the near side, he's looking right across at it. from Hay in from Dempsey away by Ford Willie Easton
Stevenson. Be well to get his cross away, glanced by Williams. The chance, decent chance. Keenan. Bryson can get a foot on it for Kilmarnock. And they can contemplate a break. And they've certainly got bodies forward. They need to get the combination of passes right. Russell. Still going, Russell. Looked like he was fouled first time. Certainly was second time. Steve Conroy just trying to let the game breathe. No advantage for Kilmarnock. But Bryson could have played away to Russell much sooner than he did. He must have run 40 yards with the ball at his feet and, and passed it 20. Instead of the other way about. He's the only one that really has given Ayr any problems tonight, Alan Russell. He's been prepared to make the two centre-backs turn. Alex Williams picking up a booking as a result of that. Gibson over this one for Kilmarnock. And saved on the line, but they've given the goal. Brindley couldn't keep it out, Steve Conroy gives Kilmarnock the goal, they have the equaliser, Ford has his goal, and it's 1-1. I think it's given by Steve Conroy, Bill. The assistant had no appetite to run to the halfway line here. Expecting Simon Ford to go across Grimley there, and yet it's over the line. Goalkeeper's momentum takes his shoulder onto the ball. It's certainly a good decision from Steve Conroy, and it was he who gave the decision, not the assistant on the far side. He must have been obstructed by the goalkeeper's body here. Lovely ball whipped in by Gibson. Ford completely unmarked. And it's another correct decision here from, well, on this occasion, Steve Conroy. Well, it's Ford's first goal since February. Kilmarnock back in business. All right, getting right back on the front foot. That was David Gormley with the shot. Just as it wasn't the start to the match they wanted, going behind to that pranty goal. It was certainly the start to the second half. Inside the first five minutes, the SPL side are level. Rugby Park comes to life. Now they just need to consolidate this uh, period of parity. Swept in by Keenan's. Come a long way here, the goalkeeper. Didn't get anywhere near it either, Alan Cohn. Did the second time. Gets off the hook, Alan Cohn. Came into a lot of, of bodies here in the six yard box. But a long last come on and have the, the crowd on side here. Bryson, score in the first meeting, of course. His goal was the one to make it 2 1. He's given the free kick, Conroy. I think it's an accidental trip there from, from Martin Campbell. Don't think he knew too much about it. A little give and go from, from Craig Bryson. This plays it, continues his run. Absolutely no intention from Campbell there. But having lost a goal from a free kick from the other side, can he defend this one a little bit better? Gibson will take it. Ford is forward, Fraser Wright is forward, the two big centre halves. Plenty of supporting roles as well, but it's away by Walker. Zion loop ball for the goalkeeper to deal with, hasn't done so particularly well either. Whether he lost it in the lights, I'm not sure, but he does get the help of the referee. But it's a really awkward one for Grindley. The ball's in the air so long, I think it's Fraser right, he knows he's got to come over the top of to get a fist on it. Scarley couldn't get there because Stevenson did. Well, it's shaping up, isn't it? This to be exactly as tight and unpredictable and as exciting as the first meeting 12 days ago back at Somerset Park. It does, of course, have to be decided tonight. If the score remains like this, we go to extra time. If it remains level after extra time, we go to penalty kicks to find out who will play in Vanessa Caledonian Thistle in round five. I'm just starting to bubble over a little bit this game. Steve Conroy, who I think is 
kept a pretty firm lid on it so far. I think he's shown a lot of common sense tonight when to produce a card and when to keep it in his pocket. First Kilmarnock player to have his name taken tonight, Willie Gibson. Two for air inside the referee's notebook. Early ball to try and pick out Williams. Down he goes. Offside given anyway as the ball was not forward. Flag was up immediately. Just trying to get back level there before he's played out of Williams, but a couple of yards. A daylight there. No encouragement at all, he needed to hit the deck either. Well, because of the nature of the air goal in the first half, the focus will be on the officials here, but important to point out that they're two big decisions they've had since then in terms of uh, the ball crossed line in the first half, look to have it absolutely spot yeah. on, just as in second half. I think even the, the first goal goal, the, the far side assistant has a really tough call to make there. Does he see the white sleeve of Prunty going up? Tough, tough call to be fair to him. And it's Brian Prunty who uh, helped the ball into the net. Just getting news of his injury. It's uh, not a hamstring problem as first feared. It's uh, a groin strain. He's going to have a scan on that in the next 24 hours to see how severe it is. Monarch on the attack again, Russell! I just couldn't quite get enough on it there. But at least they're getting the ball into the box a little bit earlier now, Kilmarnock. on. Tell in particular in the first half, wanting far too much time in the ball. Strikers making runs, ball not arriving in the six-yard box. Uh, Kilmarnock's cut pedigree hasn't been particularly good over the last six years or so. Fallen at the first hurdle in three of uh, their outings in this competition. Two years ago when they last lost to a lower division team, they lost at Division 2 Morton. The last time that they were knocked out at this stage. Towel for the goal scorer. It's timing pretty good, Simon Ford, to get his first goal of the season. 15 for Prunty. And can no longer influence the play. And joins the nervous bystanders here in this high stakes Asher affair. Pascali. Hey from a family of Kilmarnock supporters his wife Debbie watching at home and told him not to bother coming home if he ends up on the wrong side <laughs> well, the picture for him getting a good night's sleep under his own roof is looking a little rosier than it did at half time Russell going to be keen to atone for his penalty miss in the first meeting and it comes here first managerial job and Jim Jeffries who's been around the block a few times but still this is the first time longest serving SPL manager of course is the first time he's been involved in an Ayrshire derby since he took the reins at Rugby Park certainly some of the anxiety has been taken out of the, the game by the equaliser but I'm so sure we'll see Danny invincible sooner rather than later Gibson Fowler great run by Fowler just took a bobble and he hit it anyway I think he's got to take the shot on he's going to do very well to pick anyone out from that angle once he gets into this area of the pitch and as you say just sat up a little bit for him as he, as he pulled the trigger well, he's back in his preferred right back position tonight having to uh, fill in in midfield in the original meeting
Gibson. Heavy touch, Williams now for Air. Gormley goes to ground. That's a great decision for me, he's caught there by Fraser Wright. And again, Steve Conroy just wanting to breathe to see if there was anything in it for him. Just nicked it ahead of, of Fraser Wright here. They've got an angle to put something into the back post here, if they want to. Second and takes the lion's share of the set pieces up towards the far post. Campbell was that. He just couldn't quite get it back across the six yard box, but he was always the target, Martin Campbell. McGowan covering in that central defensive area. Dempsey here, but momentum lost, possession regained for air, Keenan, looking for Williams, Ford. must have got a really early shot here from Alan Cole, Simon Ford, no intention of playing that ball, a bit like a communication that, that cost him with the first goal, Russell, Makes a little injection of pace to the Kilmarnock attack. Gibson can provide that. He looks to, but again, he's shackled pretty effectively by the air fullback Dempsey. was the route that led to the equaliser. Gibson. It's back where it started with Willie Gibson. Gormley helping out. Strong challenge from Gormley then, I think it's fair to say. <laughs> Clever flick by Tauru. Fernandez, they're playing some good football here, Kilmarnock, can they get the end product? Flash wide by Bryson, could still be alive here. The cutback for Gibson, terrific block. Taul now picks it up. David the eyes, plays it wide. David Fernandez drilled low. Walker made sure that was his. McGowan across the cover as well. And Williams, one against two, but he's going to take the charge to Kilmarnock. Support arrives, it's Gormley. Stevenson's arms up, he wants it played early. Into Williams. Now give it to Aitken. And flash wide. Oh, that's poor, they had good support in the six yard box there as well. If they can get that across the face of goal. Looking from Gary Hay, leaving it for, for James Fowler. Again, lack of communication. All of a sudden, they're on the, the edge of the command box. And they've got good support, three white jerseys in the central area. Poor ball again. We've had a couple of goals, but you think of other chances for air inside the match. They've been few and far between when opportunities do come and a need to make them count. That particular break, we can go in that particular bracket. Russell. Pascali. 
Gormley. And by Aitken. Now Fernandez. Gibson. And Gibson couldn't get it away. He had three runners, so Kilmarnock have committed bodies forward. Jim Jeffries letting Billy Gibson know all about it there. Almost put his team in bother. He just lost that early sparkle, that early energy he had, Billy Gibson. He may well be the one who's going to make way if, if Jim Jeffries makes a, a change here. I was going to say that particular bit of generosity won't have done anything to uh, prevent the uh, introduction of Danny Invincible. It's a cold night, I think that that's steam coming out of his ears, isn't it? Terrific passion for the game, hasn't changed a bit with every passing year. Well one challenge by Pascali, Towel had to dig it out to get it over the top to Russell. He's done it though. Russell against Campbell, still going Alan Russell, corner kick for Kilmarnock. Well he could have gone down there Alan Russell. I think it was caught there by Martin Campbell, good break from Kilmarnock. Getting a little bit of joy with Taul on the left-hand side now. Just caught here. Determined to stay up though, the striker. In by Taul. Off the back of Pascali's head, Fernandez keeps it alive. Gibson behind him. Bryson calling for it in the middle. Gibson now. Gibson floats it in, Ford! Fine save by Brindley, and put over the top by Campbell. Good bit of defensive work as well. It's a terrific chance, and I think it's one that he has to take. I mean, he's made the perfect angle here, Ford, that the cross couldn't have been better. And he's got a huge target to hit there. And this time he does go across Grindley, but he can't find the inside of the far post. Terrific opportunity. After that, he did well, Martin Campbell, to make sure he was first to it and to get the height to get it over the goal as well. That's what's led to this corner in by Fernandez. Bryson back. Ford. Hay is last man back for uh, Kilmarnock. Fernandez. of the match gone now pretty hard to call which way it's going to go it should be Kilmarnock but that's been the case since the start and they've behind at half time and here a flashpoint as local passions threatened to boil over Taol incensed by something that Stevenson's done I think the money would have been in Ryan Stevenson shake of the hand there Steve Conroy had already gone to his pocket I don't know why Tull's getting involved, he's giving away a bit of weight there. Well, he's always on the straight side, he's never within playing distance of the ball, Stevenson. Third yellow card picked up by the visitors here at Rugby Park tonight. Hey. Ford have gone forward again, here's Taul. Keenan, the recipient of one of those yellows. Just kept it in. Hey, too much on that, you would think. Fernandez might yet make something of it. Oh, that's fantastic from the Spaniard. That's the table technique that he has. Oh. Well, you what, he's turning. gone off here, he's gone off. The referee was right there. He's lashed out by the look of things, and this could be another pivotal moment in this cup tie. 
Fernandez unhappy with the close attentions. Frustration boiled over. The referee will have made up his mind already. I think Fernandez in his hearts of hearts knows. And the confirmation that Kilmarnock are down to 10. Well, it's an act of absolute stupidity from one of the most experienced footballers on the pitch and one of the most gifted. And it really has handicapped Kilmarnock. I don't know why he's shaking his head. And he does brilliantly to pull the ball down. So Dempsey who's leaning in, yeah, he's giving him a little bit too much attention. Needless. Well, I, I don't think Steve Conroy has a, a choice there. One one, down to ten. Still 22 minutes, just under, plus added time of normal time to play. Will the loss of a man galvanise or will it shackle Kilmarnock's hopes? Will it inspire Rat or will it make them a little nervous? You know, you see so many times the way that it can go one way or another. Fernandez telling the bench exactly what he thought he did. Steve Conroy having his view. towel and up towards the far post it has gone out Grinley didn't even get his arms up there at the back post Pascali always handy as a midfield player coming into that area balls in the air a long time Grinley just doesn't get his gloves up at all Pascali can't get it into the mix you usually know what to expect with derbies sometimes they with the habit of cancelling each other out the two sides of the local rivalry but it hasn't been the case in these two cup ties has it so many talking points with anything even more in this second meeting than in the initial one just under a fortnight ago that's a loose back pass by Wright Gormley pounced but he couldn't finish well, he has to take the shot early I don't know what Fraser Wright is thinking about here all he's got to do is put that into touch well, it's a decent chance Awkward one coming across his body in that area from that angle. But it has to go down as a decent chance. David Fernandez not the only one to lose his head out there in the colours of Kilmarnock. <laughs> Taul. Russell. Gibson now. Cleverly worked, Gibson, flash wide. I think it's well wide. I'm surprised that Tao gave him a back. I thought Tao might have spun here and try to get a shot away. Instead, it's a nice little cushion layoff for, for Gibson. It's never really a threat to, to Grinley's goal. We'll see it better from here. Keeper never really having to get across. The one bit of reassurance that Kilmarnock have here, Bill, they went to Easter Road a few weeks ago and won quite convincingly with 10 men, so they know how to get the job done when they're a man down. I was just thinking that Alan Combs sent off pretty early on in the match, the scoreline 2-2 for much of it, and Kilmarnock pushed on and won it. One thing is for sure, they're going to need to dig deep the home side. All their second division guests, and their local Ash arrivals, and they get the opportunity to finish up top dogs here tonight and progress just have a habit of spoiling the party over the years air against Kilmarnock remember when they were holders and uh, kicked off the defence of their trophy back in 1998 lost at the first time of asking to guess who yes it was air and Jackie McAnally before the game was saying about when they were crowned champions back in the 60s had an Ayrshire Cup to play after that the final <laughs> and they lost to Air. <laughs> nothing's lost yet works slightly harder than it might have been due to the uh, red mist descending and David Fernandez, Russell Gibson but the sending off has just asked a little bit more of Comanos two white players they're the two that are going to have to 
to try and get forward to support Alan Russell. Yeah, when Kamara don't have it, it'll be two banks of four, but when they do have it, the two wide players in particular are going to have to become secondary strikers at times. And perhaps the importance of situations like this will be magnified. The foul was on towel. The free kick will be taken by Gibson. Ford up, right up. Russell good in the air as well. We know what Pascali can do too. Gibson fizzed in low. Touched on by right. Pascali's in there. He's delivered so well from, the, from those set pieces. Billy Gibson. I think this is slightly behind Fraser Wright. I think he knocks this on with his shoulder. Doesn't get it cleanly. But he knocked it into a very good area as Pascali was coming round the back again. Just for a second, it looked like they might be caught out route one there, Kilmarnock, but uh, the centre-back's tucking in. James Fowler putting it back to his goalkeeper. Pascali. Slipped by Russell, collected by Walker. To Grimley, who had to look on from the substitutes bench as Queen of the South made the march to Hamden last season and made a great fist of it in the final against Rangers. Got to be better for from here at the back there. The out ball has to be better. Because even with a man advantage, it's, the pressure's coming back in waves on them at the moment. Pascale finds Tao. Now Bryson. Still going Bryson. It's a great Maisie run from Bryson. Back by Grinley. Tao! Kilmarnock leads! Many Tao fast home! And it really is one foot now in the fifth round for Kilmarnock with 15 minutes to go. Well, Grinley just left badly exposed. No real reaction after he made the save. But Kilmarnock have shown no intention to back off since they went a man down. This is a terrific run into the channel. Could have hit it earlier. Angle was doing them no favours. And it just sat up beautifully for Taul. If anything, it comes too far off the gloves here of Brindley. And Taul just following in in hope. Terrific finish. But this is a run that has set it up. Terrific run. Brindley's desperately unlucky. But what a finish. Jim Jeffries looking for his flair players to produce. They've done it. Taul, who missed the first game through injury, has a major say on this cup tie. Well, this was the scoreline going into the closing stages of that initial match. There found that little bit of late magic in the wind and the rain at Somerset Park. It's pretty icy here tonight at Rugby Park. And Killy see the job through against the honest men this time. Tal gives it the eyes, finds Gibson. They look to really put this matter to bed now. But it's Keenan away now for air. Williams, solid defending by Wright. Him upended by Russell. Threads it through for Gibson. Bryson leading the charge. Back to Taul in a pocket of space in front of the defence. Turns on the tricks. Some no nonsense defending by Dempsey. No need to chase the game here for Kamara, particularly the two central players, Pascali and Bryson. William Such. The sending off has been nothing short of remarkable from Kamara. It's almost as if it rejuvenated them. And you were mentioned the remarkable result that the, the ten men got to Easter Road. They're well in the box seat here to, to repeat that. Well, as part of the 
celebrations, Pascali has picked up a yellow card. Yellow card offence for Cuddles. Sadly, the sort of evening where emotions can get the better of anyone. Tao. Really opening his bag of tricks, isn't he, Tao, since getting the goal? Keenan. Hayes challenge. Pascali. I think he got a bit of the ball, not a great deal of it. Again, I think it's the right call from Steve Conway. Hey. Gibson still holding his position wide on the right. He has Russell in the middle. He's got Pascali arriving. He's got Bryson as well. Bryson wide. Didn't get it, did he? And he knows that. Great Bryson. Who really has come on to a game since Kilmarnock. What are just the ten men? Got plenty of time here to, to get this out of his feet. I think he'd have fancied it more on his right side. Jeffries and his boys can start to pack their bags now for a trip in the fifth round to Inverness. We've taken the uh, opportunity to make a change and send on Scott Agnew for William Easter. Terrific stuff from Kilmarnock, Russell! So nearly, so good. Well, I deserve better, the build-up is terrific, they just keep the ball alive, eventually they get away. Another terrific ball in from Pascali. And Russell may be at a stage in the game where he's getting a little bit leggy, just can't quite make up the ground. You can't explain this, but I mean, with 11 men, it was anyone's game, but since Kilmarnock lost David Fernandez, they have trampled over the top of it. Jim Jeffries might just line up with ten men on Saturday. I'm you know, just thinking the last time they played like this, the game you talked about at Easter Road, was the last time they won. Since then, two draws and two defeats. Ten men again here, and they turn on the style. Well, Gavin Skelton about to, to come on. First sign out of Jim Jeffries, thinking maybe we'll see this out now. That'll do us. really turned it the introduction of a more workmanlike midfielder in Gavin Skelton they are getting ready to make a change as well who 
chance to play most of his football at the back. And he's going to be asked to come on up front. Well, the rugby park joint is jumping. And they think they've done enough and it's hard to argue with them, the home supporters, on this particular matter. Williams has won a corner. Even though the clock ticks on. And that goal would make the matter a little interesting. Walker up, Campbell up. And go deep, Pascali across there, loose inside the box. Should be stabbed away by right, it is. Bacon. Keenan. Beaten in the air, Walker, still Walker, show too much to fall. Well, did really well to, to get through James Fowler there, Scott Walker. Nice feet from the centre back. You'd have to think it's too little, too late from here. Well, Simon Ford, who has two goals tonight, only got four in 120 games for Kilmarnock before tonight, hadn't scored since February. And you think of that other really good chance he had, could have had a hat-trick tonight, a big centre-half. Gibson. Skelton. Russell. Pascali. Skelton. It's sent off in the red card, but the Olays are going around Rugby Park at the moment. It's Kilmarnock wind down the clock and throws in on the penalty area. Here's Williams now for it. significantly and now the blue and white can break good run good relief run there from Alan Russell gets Kelly 60 70 yards up the pitch there and Danny Invincible who only a couple of hours before the kickoff here put pen to paper on a new deal to extend his stay at the club Come on for the remaining three and a half minutes plus added time. situation that they have salvaged here Kilmarnock it makes it all the more satisfying a goal yeah. tinged with controversy really looked like things weren't going their way well when Fernandez goes you, nobody sees this outcome but they have been absolutely magnificent from the moment they went down to 10 men it did prove to be the turning point of the match just as you say not as anyone would have expected Ford's gone up, Bill, he said he might, he's looking for this hat trick, he, he certainly is, I'm surprised he's gone up at this stage in the game, but he, he's looking for a third to you. And it's up to Walton, but Ford to attack, Walker defended, and Skelton slices. No, he doesn't get a chance to get this clean, Simon Ford. 
Scott Walker tight on him in the central area. Half chance for Gavin Skelton on the half volley. Kamala just about there. settles on this and they can very nearly start the celebrations of Ayrshire superiority Kilmarnock and we'll look at the fact that they've reset the clock 15 years since they got the better of their local rivals and bearing in mind that uh, between the last meeting and this one the gap was seven years might have the bragging rights for a while to the last minute of the 90. Steve Conroy just holds play because uh, Philly wants to make another change. Terrific last quarter of the game that we've seen from Craig Bryson really stepped up to the plate when most needed tonight. His shot, of course, parried by the air goalkeeper, finished off by Tal. That swung this tie in Kilmarnock's favour. Skelton. Off the heels of Danny Invincible. Agnew, two minutes of added time. <laughs> well, a derby that's provided a tantalizing tale, really from the handball goal in the first half to the goal that wasn't was it or wasn't it across the line correct decision in the end made by the referee Steve Conroy as it was when it was smuggled over by Ford's header Brindley couldn't hold it before it across the line that was the equalising goal Kilmarnock down to 10 men and then they turned it on and continued to do so I'll tell you what else they, they, they've done Bill they, they've managed to get David Fernandez off the hook you know, had Kilmarnock lost this match through his stupidity, he would have had to have taken a long look in the mirror. But his teammates have bailed him out here. Well, Kilmarnock and their fans ending up singing the loudest, but credit should go to this air support as well for turning up in real numbers tonight completely sold out their allocation of uh, around three and a half thousand and contributed to a really good atmosphere at rugby park which has produced a topsy-turvy cup tie Gibson the two minutes of time are played Underneath it. 
The cheer that tells you Ayrshire Pride belongs to Kilmarnock tonight, as does a place in the homecoming cup. Fifth round and a trip to Inverness. Unlikely heroes across the board, none more so than Simon Ford. Two goals for him from the back to help Kilmarnock's ten men take a grip on the tie when it looked like it would get away from them after David Fernandez had been sent off. They had took the lead, of course, in the first half, but it was the finish with a real flourish from Kilmarnock, which saw them claim the day. Well, they had to do the hard way, built down to ten men, but what a response Jim Jeffries got from that point onwards. The sending off that they should have turned the game, Air Airsway had the exact opposite effect. Simon Ford that fought for the first goal, two terrific headers. And unbelievably, Kilmarnock are in the next round and nobody can deny them it. Well, the first time in six meetings that they've beaten Air Kilmarnock, the first time for 15 years on this ground. They're going to enjoy it, and rightly so. Their ten men have secured the place in the fifth round of the homecoming Scottish Cup. And they win on the night by three goals to one. And they are loving this, Bill. They're staying inside the ground to congratulate 10 men Killy, they're through next stop for them away to Inverness Caledonian Thistle at the end of the day Alan McAnally did the gulf between the divisions show in the end yeah I think so Absolutely. I thought after 60-65 minutes I thought here were very very leggy indeed and David Proven called it when 10 men when Kermarnock went down to 10 men I don't know, they just kicked into gear. I thought Craig Bryson in the middle of the park was absolutely different class. And that fella did well, didn't he? Simon Ford, yeah. nephew actually of Mark Walters. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Mark's an ex-colleague of mine and they said to me he's a decent player but he didn't say he was as good as that at set pieces because the bottom line is those set pieces tonight have almost secured uh, that, pos you know, that position for them in the next round. And Alan, you can see exactly what it means to Jim Jeffries. Well, Jim Jeffries knew that... pressure on him yeah, tonight. The, the, Jim knew that this was a no-win situation for him. They're the, they're the high ranking club in Ayrshire with the SPL team and all the pressures on Kilmarnock at home tonight to prove they're the better team they did that and they did it in the end relatively easy the first half wasn't easy for them second half was a little easier Alan what does it tell you about Kilmarnock's character tonight going down to 10 men and then yeah. really raising the game well they did it yet uh, at Easter Road as well didn't they they got a marvellous result with only 10 men and I think to be honest as I said I think the United's legs I think they had gone I think they were I think they were very I think mentally the, the preparation for the game the media hype in the west of Scotland has been a lot for these players to take there's a lot of these players have never ever played in a live game on television before and eventually I think it paid on them they had to defend and defend for large periods in the game and eventually Kilmarnock got strong Stronger, little tricks and eventually they were just too strong for them. Wonderful for Kilmarnock, but definitely, definitely deserve to go through. Sad to say it, but I think you'd agree, Air United, your old club, they just came up short, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, the first time, it looked at one point, you and I said it just sitting watching the game, it looked as if everything was going for Air. Everything, some of the results, you know, the ball not over the line, the goal that they got was used, you know, was put in by Prunty with his arm and you just thought, is this going to be the night that Air United come to Rugby Park and not you know, Kilmarnock off a pedestal to be a certain point, but it, it, fantastic run. The fact that they got a draw at Somerset Park 11 days ago was probably their, not the, the whole season, but certainly an, an opportunity to get some money to, to put the club in a little bit of better position financially and certainly pit your wits against an SPL team that are doing okay in the Premier Division. They're doing okay. What about Kilmarnock? How far do you think they can go in this? <clears throat> if they can play with 10 men, I think they can probably go all the way. They look to be a better team with 10 men. Certainly Fernandez is out of order and, and got what he deserved, a straight red card. <sighs> it's the Scottish Cup, anything can happen. They've won it before, they can possibly win it again. Jim Jeffries just kicks every ball yeah. on the sidelines, doesn't he? Well, he was, he's as animated as I've ever seen him, to be honest. But as I say, I think he knew, and I think tried to press to his players, look, we, are, we have everything to lose here. We have to make sure we put our superiority in the better players and quality we have, and including that, we are the SPL team tonight. We have to come out as a top Ayrshire team. Alan, let's join David Tanner now. He's with a couple of the Kelly heroes. David. Simon, Alan, congratulations. Kilmarnock's first derby win in 15 years. How much does that mean? It means a lot. It means a lot to the fans. Um, it's one of them games that we didn't want to lose. We would have been scared to come out the change room if we did. We um, were disappointed to have the draw at their place, but we brought them back here and showed our quality. 
Alan, have you enjoyed the last couple of games? Big crowds and the, the local public right behind the two teams. Yeah, it's been great. Um, obviously, the last the last game uh, wasn't great. Should have won it, but we didn't. Um, all credit to us. We've um, showed a bit of character tonight, and um, thanks to this man, we've won the tie. There were big celebrations in the dressing room behind you at the moment. Will you enjoy it more than most, given your missed penalty? Um, no, we're back to business tomorrow. We've got a game Sunday, so be home, bed, training in the morning. Kilmarnock seemed to be motivated when they went down to 10 men. Is that fair to say, after David Fernandez's red card? Yeah, I think that happens. Um, you know in your mind you have to work harder. Um, you need to protect your lead. And we've done that. Simon, you've had to wait almost a year for a goal and two came along in the one night. You couldn't have timed it any better, could you? Nah, um, the lads will tell you, I'm not one for scoring goals. I go up there all the time, put it over the bar or miss easy chances. So I'm just delighted that we're through, delighted to get two goals. And just... It's all the sweeter for you to score given that you are right at the first goal for air when Brian Prunty admitted now he scored with his hand. It was a hand of God goal. Yeah, definitely. I was disappointed in my first half performance. I was a bit slack. I felt I should have done better from the goal. Probably should have dealt with it a bit earlier so it wouldn't have come to that. Um, so I tried to atone for my mistake in the second half. Um, desperate to score, as you can see from the celebration for the first goal. Um, <laughs> so I'm just delighted, actually. Alan, managerless Inverness away next. Yeah. Can come on at go on a run now? Yeah, hopefully. Um, if the draw is kind to us. Um, as I say, we've got Inverness the next round. It's a tough one. Um, they've got all got a point to prove. They might have a new manager in by then, so they'll be all guns blazing. But you go in right attitude and hopefully get through it the next round. The party started already. Enjoy your night, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers. Alan, I don't know about you, a couple of very self-effacing professional yeah. players. And I think in Alan Russell's comments here, Jeffries will love that. Mm. Yeah, we've won tonight, mm. home to bed, back to training tomorrow. Well, you've, as a football player, Jim, that's where you've got to look at it, to be quite honest with you, because they've got a big game on Sunday. And this, you know, they've, they've, they've come over the hurdle tonight. I think I think what uh, Ford said as well, you know, he said, we couldn't have come out of the dressing room had we not done it tonight. And that's what I was talking about before we went to the interview. They had everything to lose tonight, Kilmarno. They really had to put on a show tonight. And eventually they had to do it the hard way. They had to do it with 10 men and do it they did and they put here in the position or, 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 or the place rather and proved that they were the superior team it was a fantastic cup tie fantastic it really for, the, was. for all of Ayrshire Ayr did well, incidentally Ayr have done fantastic well. they're in it 1-0 at half time thinking hang on we've got an opportunity to do ok here but to be honest the sending off ridiculously enough changed the attitude well, with we'll, Kilmarnock players and they just went along and did it. We'll check that out in a moment. It was 1-0 at half-time, but then Kilmarnock really had to roll up their sleeves and get back in it. And Simon Ford, who you thought played a blinder, he did so well in yeah. the second half, didn't he? That got them right back in this game. Yeah, a set piece, lovely ball in from Gibson. And there's no marking on Ford. You can, he's in between defenders. It's a good, powerful header on. And it's a good save originally from Grindley. But his momentum just pushes the ball over the line. You can see Pascali coming in to make sure. But the ball had definitely, definitely gone across the line. And the referee gave the right decision. A goal by Ford. And then a key moment in this game. Alan, I have to ask you, what was David Fernandez thinking about? Oh, well, I don't know. The he's, referee he's, was right beside this. I mean, he does ever so well keeping the ball in play. And there's a kind of clumsy challenge, isn't there, from Martin Campbell and and then his arm just comes around and whacks him right in the face. Well, there you go, bang. And there is absolutely no choice for referee but to give him a red card. I mean, he's standing, what, 10 yards away? He can see immediately that Fernandez is just taking his arm straight across Campbell, and he doesn't give him any choice whatsoever. He's one fortunate player, isn't he? Because his 10 colleagues got the side through. Well, that's 1-1. One, one. You go down to 10 men, and I'm sure here for five or six minutes thought, hang on a minute, we might find ourselves in the next round here. And it wasn't the case, and all of a sudden, like I said, I thought that uh, um, Craig in the middle of the park was absolutely brilliant, Craig Bryson that is, was fantastic, driving, driving forward, and really lift, co lifted Command up with the scruff of the neck and pushed them forward and made sure really, Ayr even against the 10 men, didn't really have many opportunities to get, uh, uh, to get the lead back. Well, actually, Gormley did. Gormley was through. Now, this was a key moment. And you were on your feet at this because you thought he was going to go in. I mean, it was a slight pass back, wasn't it? It was a shocking pass back. Absolutely shocking. He just doesn't make contact, Jim. He's tried to place this or curl this right into the near post. And he simply doesn't make good enough contact. It's an easy save for goalkeeper. It was a great opportunity. To, but to be honest, I'm counting them in the back of my hand in the second half. He yeah. didn't create too many chances. That was one at 1-1 one, one where you just thought, oh, maybe that's the chance. Maybe that was a chance. And in fact, that was their only chance in the second half. To be when honest. a chance came Towles' way, uh, he certainly buried it didn't he yeah. and I think there and then 
It was good night here, United, yeah, wasn't it? I, I thought the legs had completely gone with this. This is the, this is Bryson driving forward, takes one on, goes around, takes another one on. Good strikes, a good save by the goalkeeper, but the problem is the ball bounces too far away and it doesn't bounce to a white jersey and towels onto the end of it. Bryson driving, driving, shot on target, goalkeeper saves and drilled in and 2 1. And to be honest, from then on, I think Kilmarnock knew they were in the next round. Did 3 1 flatter Kilmarnock? Or no. was it just about right? Just no, about right. Just about right. I think one more might have flattered them a little bit, uh, albeit with the ten men. But I think three was certainly uh, as, as worth as Kilmarnock played to, tonight. Absolutely no question. Yeah. But certainly two one. And I said to you right away, I said Ayers legs looked very very tired. There was a few of them really treading quicksand at the time. Was it quite fitting that Ford got them back into it and Ford finished them off? Very good. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> well, did. Again, it's a set piece, not particularly well defended. But it's a great ball in from Taul. And the goalkeeper's coming to get it and he is in absolutely no man's land whatsoever. If you're a goalkeeper and you're coming to get that ball, then everybody in front of you has to get be, to go flying and you've got to get your fist on that. And Ford's in, a little flick. I mean, all he has to do is direct it onto target. The goalkeeper's out of position and probably 3-1 was probably the writers, uh, writers off. Well, back. Ford's happy, Killy fans are happy and no doubt that man, Jim Jeffries, who puts everything into Kilmarnock's performances, will no doubt be happy. He didn't look at there, did he? Let's find out. He's with David Tanner. Jim, you're normally a very placid man, but not tonight. What does that tell us? Uh, well, it means that uh, I knew what it meant to the supporters and that when uh, you see the record against there and, you know, we said we just couldn't lose this tonight. And um, having got off to the start, we did. You know, the last thing you want to do with the way that we've, the luck's been going against us at, at uh, half you know, at half time to, to be one they'll do. We just have to say to the players, just keep doing what you're doing because uh, gaps will appear because they were working ever so hard to keep us out because we really were dominating the match in the first half and, uh, you know, but they, they cleared everything and uh, got in the back of things. So we're getting the goal early and I have to say Simon Ford deserves a lot of credit because he did make a bad mistake for the, with the pass out and then, you know, getting caught in behind though evidence shows that it was a punch into the goals. Um, so we had to do it the hard way and we've come out the second half, just continued to do what we're doing, got Bryson driving for the middle of the park and, uh, you know, we got the goals this time, which uh, has been sort of, you know, been difficult to get at home. And uh, so great credit to, to Simon for bringing us, getting us back in the game and getting a front, so, or, or clinching it, should I say. But uh, even when we went down to 10 men, we were superb and, uh, because we were the better team tonight, I think that showed, but they are, you know, dogged and they got something to hang on to and it was always going to be tough after that, but uh, we answered it and uh, we came back strongly and I think uh, nobody can deny us that we deserve to be through the next round. What was your view on the red card and did it, in some strange way, get your players going? <laughs> well, we were just winding David up when we came in, he says that was the best thing that happened to us, I think, because we... You know, it means everybody's just got to pick this up and do that a little bit more. But I think uh, I'll have to look out in the video. He says he didn't touch him, but I don't know. I've not, I've not seen it. But certainly, for my first impression when it comes, I thought you're off because he, he did, uh, he did swing an arm. So you know, look at the video. But uh, it was very silly. And uh, but that's what you get: passions running high in derby matches. And uh, but, but as I say, it didn't upset us. The players picked themselves up. Knew we could do it with ten men because we were so superior. Uh, in all departments in the game, but as I say, they stuck to their task and fought, and, and I hope they go on and, and get promotion. And uh, because um, you know they, they, they caused us problems over the two games. Next up, Inverness away in the homecoming Scottish Cup for you. Can you go there with confidence after tonight's second half performance? We've thinking about that now. We've got important league game to. We'll take a big lift that we've we've got to uh, win at home, and uh, we've done it with a wee bit of you know, really good play and hopefully we can carry it on and we'll think about the cup tie when it comes round. We've got league games to play before that. So hopefully um, we'll take a lift of this and, um, and I'm sure it'll give the boys a bit more confidence going into the game on Sunday. Take a lift, you're absolutely flying, Jim. Enjoy the night. Okay, thank you.
Hey, it's relaxed now. He's laughing now, but he wouldn't have been laughing at Fernandez sending off had they lost tonight. Listen, easy to be after 90 minutes and you're through to the next round and you've done it with 10 men. It's easy to have that kind of jocular attitude because, you know, they're saying, oh, we're laughing with David Fernandez when we went into the dressing room. He'd have thrown him out through the dressing room window if they'd got beat tonight, <laughs> to, to be perfectly honest with you. Because when, when he does see the replay, he'll see that he swings an arm, he hits it, and he makes the referee's decision easy for him. It's one of those things in the game that you don't want to happen as a manager. It does, but you get the reaction from your players that you you want when they're down to 10 men. They literally picked the pace up. The passing was smarter, and eventually as Air got more tired, space became their premium for Kamala, and they put them to bed. Was justice seen to be done tonight, Alan, following the nature of Air United's well, opening goal? Possibly, possibly. Well, in fact, yes, that's the problem. When Ford gives it away for nothing, and he gets the ball inside, and you can see here, there is absolutely no question that Prunty uses his arm to put the ball into the net. Ford gets caught in behind and it just maybe comes off of Ford's head first but Prunty certainly pushes his arm out the referee doesn't see that the linesman really should have seen it but maybe because of Ford's head he couldn't see it properly and just maybe you're right justice was done let's check out the draw and it's a draw that saw Kilmarnock go through tonight and not Air United there it is in full Aberdeen East Fife Dunfermline will travel to Airdrie Celtic stay home to Queen's Park it's Forfar against Rangers. That is a game you can see with us live on Sky Sports on February the 8th. It's at noon. Uh, Hamilton against Dundee United. It's Hearts Falkirk. Kilmarnock winners tonight over Air United will travel to Inverness and Inverurie Loco will play Motherwell or St Mirren. Alan, a final moment from you. I know yeah. it was an emotional one for you tonight. Did you yeah. enjoy it? Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Delighted we're still getting the Usher team in it. Uh, Kilmarnock certainly capable, no question, capable of going to Inverness and getting a result. But good to be back up in Scotland. Loved every minute of it, mate. Great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Alan McAnally here at Rugby Park where Kilmarnock Arnock won 3-1 over their great rivals, Air United. Hope you enjoyed it. From me, bye for now.